So in your kits, you have acrylic paint, you're gonna have a crayon and a marker. Out. These are gonna represent the finishes that we would use within woodworking. So for this activity, we're gonna do finishes. Once we're done with the measurements, we're gonna flip the board over and we're gonna make four quadrants again. In each quadrant, we're gonna put different finishing types. First, once again, you want to find center, and that can be done in a variety of ways. So in this case, I'm finding um, the X portion just to find the center point. As you can see here, And the tool that I'm using is actually a smaller carpenter or framing square. So you're going to label each quadrant and then what it's going to be for its finish. So quadrant one is going to be wax, quadrant two is going to be a stain. Quadrant three is going to be acrylic paint, and quadrant four is going to be oil. So once again, clearly label them. And we're going to start with the wax. So crayons have wax in it, so it gives you the same kind of concept. It gives you that certain feel or certain touch when you're putting your hand on that board. Um, and what that is, it's do what what that's doing is giving it a layer of protection, sort of like putting Bu's wax on something. You're trying to give the wood some protection. The cool part about the crayon is that it's giving you some color. Um, but with wax and with this crayon, you can see you can still see the grain underneath. So you have that protection of the wood, um, but you still see the grain. With wax, it's harder to put something else on it. So it's harder to make the pencil marks. It's harder to make any other marks on it because the wax is protecting that wood. So when you're applying a wax over your wooden stock, you're doing it as a protection but wax is not extremely durable it's not going to last for a long period of time and usually you have to recoat multiple times but it does give that type of protection and it still allows for you to see the grain underneath so if you wanted to hide that grain wax would not be your option or if you wanted to hide any errors made wax wouldn't be that option so I'm showing you here how it's hard to do the measurement activity, but it is possible. Um, just notice I'm wiping off the wax. So you can continue doing um, crayon and wax and it can be used, but you're taking off the wax as you're doing it. For the next part, we're gonna be using stains. So a great example of stain is a marker, especially a permanent marker. So the permanent marker, as you know, when you put onto the board, and I'm showing you a variety of different ones, as long as it's a permanent marker, I believe a regular marker should have the same effect, but you'll note that when the permanent marker goes on the board, it stains into it. As it's staining into the, the wood, um, you're able to see the wood grain as well as color. Stains do not offer any protection unless it's added with something else like a polyurethane. Um, it's mainly there for a visual color effect with the ability to see underneath, so to see the grain. So if you're applying, a, if you are applying a stain, you want to make sure that that board is clear and that you have nothing or no defects that can be seen or shown. Um, all pencil marks are removed. So I'm applying the different variety or different types of thick or thin um, to show you how it's being absorbed into the wood. And notice the thicker marker kind of bled out a little more than the thinner one. 
So you're going you have to be aware that the stain spreads as it's going. If I was applying a real stain, I would apply it, let it soak into the wood, and then I would wipe it off with a cloth. That cloth would then have to be disposed into a fireproof container because stain is flammable. Um, so we wanna make sure that we have that safety precaution. So notice how you can still see the grain underneath and everything that's happening underneath, even with the darker color. So I drew some pencils to show you that if I was made a mark or whatever, um, you'd still be able to see the stain. But notice if it was a darker color, it'd be harder to view, but it would still be visible. So if you're watching, um, I'm pulling this up, you can see my pencil clear for the lighter color. You can kind of see it. Um, in the video, I tilted the wood a little so you could see the reflection, but I could still see the pencil when I was doing it. Um, notice you can still see the pencil line. All right, for the next part, we're going to do acrylic paint. So an acrylic paint is different than regular exterior interior paint because it's made um, for, to be safe for kids. So kids, kids put their hands in their mouth. Usually it's waterproof. Um, depending on the type that you get. In other words, if you just use soap and water, it comes out. I have a container of water next to me so that I could clean off my brush nice and easily. Um, with acrylic paint or with all paint, the cool part is that you can hide anything that you don't want to be seen. All right, so for a paint to work, you want it to actually not be so smooth. So. You don't have to sand it and make it as pretty as you would for stain and wax because you're hiding underneath, but you also want that paint to adhere to your wood board. So if I was going to use paint for a wooden project, I would only sand to 150 grit. Notice with the water in the paint, I can lighten the paint and kind of make it like a watercolor effect where it's a mixture of a stain or it acts as if it was a stain. Um, allowing me to still see the grain underneath and any of the pencil marks. So that also has to come into play um, when you are trying to figure out how, what finish to apply on your board. All right. You can still see the pencil mark, you can still see the grain, um, but it still gives it the lovely color. But on the darker blue, I don't see any. Why? I don't see any because it's thicker. Um, it's hiding its defect. I'm seeing the grain with the lighter color because it's thinner um, and spread out and acting more as a stain. So once again, water was added to the paint in order to get that effect. So the next one we're gonna talk about is oil. Oil is um, very similar to stain with protection aspects where it's very minimal and you have to reapply it. At home, you usually can find an oil like mineral oil or butcher block oil that is applied to countertops that have butcher blocks or even cutting boards. So we're just going to apply a little oil because an oil goes a long way and we're just going to rub it into the board um, and that's it. That's how you would apply it. So stain, if I was to apply, it would be very, in a real stain, I'd apply it the same way. I would just apply, put it onto the board and let it soak in and for the oil I would rub it in just like the wax um, this way it's absorbing into the actual wood and then it's gonna give you a sheen to the actual board as well as um, continue to soak in so as you can see there's the sheen you see the green you'll see everything so for these you have to sand to the highest grit possible um, 220 in most cases. Sometimes people go up to even 400 grit sandpaper um, when doing their finishes. Once again, if you're trying to hide the defects, you would use the acrylic paint. Notice I don't have to sand as much, um, but for the other ones, I would. Um, just also note, um, the acrylic paint gives you some dirt protection. You can't see it but I could draw and do anything onto the oil. It will leave some oil on my pencil, um, but you can still see it. It'll still go through. 
Um, and that's why we have to always reapply an oil with minimal production.